and bingo, it's ready to go. And so this is the project where I'm going to um, show you how to make wings flap. So first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a model. So I'm going to drag out my grasshopper and um, let me go ahead and find it. It's somewhere in here. Uh, frame on that thing. There it is. Okay, cool. Now it's stuck in the ground. Move it up in the air a little bit. In fact, let me even... What? Let's see. Am I looking at a nice... Yeah, there we go. Flying directly towards a mountain. Okay. Now, this is the, the basic model that, I, that I'm starting with here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, because it's a prefab, and I don't really want to change my prefab, I want to make this a whole brand new object. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click it. And under prefab, I'm going to select unpack completely. That totally breaks its prefab association with the grasshopper prefab in this folder. These are not, no longer related. This is now its own freestanding standalone object. Now I'm going to open this up. Um, the student who made this for me, she really did a fantastic job. Freshman, ninth grader, um, put a lot of time and effort into it, named her objects carefully. One of the first things I want to do here, and this is going to be a painstaking part where I'll start this, then I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to finish it, and then I'm going to unpause the video because this is going to take some time. But I want to completely remove all those colliders. Look when you select this thing. Look at all those colliders. Oh, my God. So first thing, to make this work a lot easier, it's going to be nice to get all those colliders gone. So to re remove the colliders... I'm going to start on the very first object, and there's a capsule collider, and remove the component. And then I'll click on this one. I wonder, can I do this with all of them? I doubt it. Nope, I can't. It won't let me. So it'd be nice if I could select them all, you know, and then just remove all their colliders. Let me see. Will it let me do it with the eyes? Yeah, it will. I can remove the sphere collider. They're from both of them. And then from the neck, remove that Collider, left antenna, right antenna. Let me remove. Yeah, I did. And then see here the abdomen. It's got the abdomen and all of its legs. Let's see if I can I can I do all of these at once too? Yes, I can. Remove all those colliders. Good. They're gone. Then I got a thorax. And I'm gonna remove that collider. The right wing and all of its stuff. I can remove those colliders and in the right eye, all these eyes here, remove those colliders and then the left wing, remove all those colliders, the right wing, get rid of all those colliders. And I guess because I figured out a faster way to do this, I don't have to um, pause the video. You guys are just getting to watch this and remove those colliders. Remove that one right there. Then the body scales that she's got here. And then the front scales. Now, if I did this right, when I click on the parent object, the grasshopper, I should see now that I'm now living in a collider-free world. And, you know, I like that. I like that. I'm in a world with no colliders. Good. So I've got the meshes. And then this is an interesting thing that I learned here. Um, you know, as I looked at some of these things, and uh, in particular, I looked at uh, this mesh right here, um, this part of the body, let me see if I can select it, click on it, click on it, and it's just not letting me select it. Let's see. That would be, I think, the abdomen. Yes, there it is. It's the abdomen. I learned something here in its mesh and here in its mesh renderer here in its mesh. The mesh is set to a cylinder. I learned that I could click on that and if I wanted to, I could change that mesh to a capsule. And I just, I kind of liked it better as a capsule, so I turned it into a capsule. And then I selected this piece right here. This is the neck. And it's a cube mesh, 
And I think I'd rather make that into a cylinder. Let me see. Is that, is that going to work? No, because... Um, So let me undo that. We'll just leave that as a square. What I did before is I deleted it and then just put a cylinder in there. But uh, all right, so that's okay. So that's the one thing that I wanted. I just I, I liked. I wanted that to be round right there. I don't know why, but anyway. Now we've done a bunch of stuff here. Remember, save save early, save often. But to make the wings flap, we need to make a whole bunch of stuff disappear because right now. The hierarchy is just loaded with all of these objects here and um, so many different body parts. And one thing, I, I'd like to isolate one wing. So let me just let me hide everything first. Can I do this by brute force? Yeah, that did hide it all, didn't it? And then I can just click on like the right wing. Okay, there's the right wing, right wing. All right. So that just gets that one object the right wing. And with that right wing, I can see that, you know, there's a, a base part. And if I rotate that base part, I think it's in the Z axis. That's right. If I rotate that base part in the Z axis, that wing will flap there. Now, keep in mind, now that I've moved it around, I, I need to put it back where it was. So I'm going to hit control Z and just snap that wing back to where it was at. I need to put a pivot point on, on this, this end of the wing here. Right now, her parent object that my student set up for the wing, which also includes that part and that part right there. So these are like she's calling this mid base and long base. And then here's right wing. And, you know, I'm even going to name this base. And then let me see here. There's um, two right wings here. There's a right wing. There's another right wing. Let me unhide that one. All right, so let's see. Looks like that one is the right base rear wing. So naming things can really be helpful. And besides having the bases, there's also the back wings, you know, the feathers, you know. And she called them back wings and because we copied and pasted copies of this, you'll see those names pop up again. I want to focus on this piece right here. This is the part that's sticking into the body of the abdomen. It's kind of hidden in there. And I would like to orient a pivot point that would be lined up perfectly with this transform. And um, initially I was like, okay, you know, I'll select the parent object and I hit plus and I'm going to create an empty. And that just happened to create an empty right there here in the scene. But if I look at this and if I compare these two, transforms there's that game object and uh <coughs> pardon me i want this to be my right rear rotator i want my right rear rotator to be lined up with this right wing base rear so you know, trying to line this thing up, okay, by by me rotating and uh, moving the position and trying to get it lined up with that point right there, that could be really hard if I did that by eye. But it turns out there's a much easier way. And it occurred to me because of some things I learned recently. Let me select the right wing base rear. If I right click position on its transform, I'm able to copy that transform's position. So I'll copy that. And I'm going to go down to my right rear rotator. And on the position here, I'll right click it and I'm going to paste that. And now let me copy this again. Copy that position. Come to my right rear rotator. Paste that position. And why can't I see it? I know why. It's not inside my grasshopper. It 
needs to be inside my grasshopper. There we go. Now that it's inside my grasshopper, if I paste that position, now it's going to line up perfectly with the right wing base rear. But there's a problem. You'll notice that the sticks don't have the right rotation. So let me go to my right wing base rear and let me also, I'm not able to just copy the position. I can actually copy. Now there's, there's something to be careful about though. There's a difference in angles. Euler angles, that word E-U-L-E-R is pronounced Euler. Euler angles are what you see in the window. Quaternions are in radians. If you're in math two or higher, you've learned about radians when you learned about trigonometry. We want to copy the Euler anglers and Euler angles, those are the angles in degrees. So I'll copy the Euler angles, come back here to the right rear rotator, and click on that, and I'm going to paste those Euler angles. And now I really won't be able to tell the difference. These two objects appear to be lined up perfectly. And now that I've got those lined up perfectly, I'm just going to grab the rotator. I'm going to grab the rotator in the y-axis and just move it out so that it's a little bit in front of the wing. There's a little bit of a gap. I don't want this to rotate right from the wing. I want it to rotate from a little bit further off from the wing, a little offset right there. And now if I rotate that in Z, oh, control Z, control Z that. First, let me take the right wing base rear, move this up to there the rotator, moving it right there, and then I'm going to grab the rear base and I'm going to make it a child of the rotator. Everything should still look good. Everything should still look good. But now when I click on the rotator, if I rotate this in Z, now the wing will rotate based on that pivot point. Let me control Z, put myself back in the right position. Now I have to repeat this process three more times for each of the wings. So let me hide the right rear rotator. Now it's hidden. And then let me even drag the right rear rotator down here by my right wing. Let me put my left wings next to each other. So my left wings are next to each other. And let's see, there's my right rear rotator. Here's my right wing front base know that it's the front wing because the other right wing was the rear wing. And now I've got that front base right here, and I even have, it's already right there on its transform. So I'm going to go ahead and under my grasshopper here, I'm going to right click it. This is the mistake I made before. I use this plus symbol to create the empty, and it just created it in the hierarchy. I wanted this empty created under the grasshopper. So I'll right click it. And I will create an empty, and now it is created under the grasshopper. And this is going to be the right front rotator. Now that I've got a right front rotator, let me put this up by the right front base. And then I want to copy some stuff. I need to get the right front base's position and paste that into the and there we go. Now my positions line up. I need to get the front base's Euler angles. And I'll paste those Euler angles. Now it winds up perfectly. Grab it in the Y axis and move it so that it's offset a little bit to the front by some small amount. And uh, then I will take the right wing front base, which, you know, contains all the wing parts, the little wing parts, take that and make that a child of the right front rotator. And I'll save those. All right. Now I have to do the same thing for the left wings. Let me unhide both of them so I can figure out which one's the front and which one's the rear. Let's hide the right front. There we go. Now let's see, there's the front one, left wing, base, front, that one's going to be the left wing, base rear. All right, so now I've got my 
front and rear bases identified. I know which wing is which. I'll go ahead and hide the front wing for the moment, and I'll focus on this rear wing right here. And it's just the same thing all over again. Um, I'll select the parent object, the grasshopper, right-click it, and create an empty. Name it my left rear rotator. I'll move it up by my left wing base rear. And then I will go and harvest these values. I'm going to get its position. Copy the position. Paste it into the rotator. Uh, I'm going to copy the left wing base rear's rotation. The Euler angles. Left rear rotator. Paste those Euler angles. Now it lines up perfectly. Grab the Y axis. Pull it out so it's out in front of it just a little bit. And then I will select the left wing base rear, and I will make it a child of the left rear rotator. And that'll let me hide the left rear. Now let's unhide the left wing base front, and we'll select its, no, the parent object, right click, create empty, left front, Rotator. I'll move the left front rotator up here by the left wing base front. And I'll go get my position. Copy the position. Paste it. Copy the rotation. The Euler angles. Paste them. Grab that Y axis and pull it out so that it's a little bit in front. Did I misspell front? I did. That looks good. And then I will take the left wing base front and make it a child of the left front rotator. Now the stage is set. I have all of the pivot points that I'm going to need in order to make those wings flap. And that's going to finish this first video right here. Um, so uh, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.